Hello everyone, I'm Crystal Cruz here with Alex Camerata for some more uniquely West Texas action. We had an amazing year getting to know more about our little slice of the Lone Star State and we wanted to share with you a few moments from behind the scenes that make these shows so special. Yeah, Crystal, that's right. I know we make it look easy, but believe it or not, it's actually pretty hard to put together all of these shows on location outside of this comfy studio. In fact, we'll get the chance to hear from the folks who made a lot of what you see on screen all possible. But first, we wanted to give you a sneak peek of Uniquely West Texas behind the scenes. Take a look. All right, well, I'm here with Clarissa Salinas, our 10 o'clock producer and the woman in charge of two <laughs> of our uniquely West Texas shows. Clarissa, how are you? I'm great. This is awesome to be doing this for the first time ever, uh, to be able to share our side of the story uh, from the producer's point of view. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to kick things off. <laughs> well, as you mentioned, you said this was your first time doing uniquely West Texas. I know a lot of people are probably asking, what attracted you to this project? Yeah, so being here with Muse West 9 for about a year, I had done other projects. So I had worked with Starbright, that's the Christmas show that we put on, election coverage. And so with doing Uniquely West Texas, it was something different. It was a little bit out of my comfort zone because I hadn't really gotten out into the community and be able to see what it's like similar to what our reporters do you know getting in touch with the community meeting other people you know seeing different spots of town so i think going into this project it was it broadened my horizon as a producer because you know i'm so used to working in a studio and now i'm actually out in the field you know and it's kind of like a little bit of a fresh air and like a little mini vacation i guess you could say <laughs> it is <laughs> Well, when you were scouting around, obviously that's one of the things we do. You had a chance to look at some really cool places in West Texas, and one of the towns that Clarissa picked was Marfa. Tell me what attracted you to Marfa. Yeah, so with Marfa, you know, I heard that it was Little Austin, as some people call it, you know, because it's so artsy, you know, it's very, a lot of things are happening there that are moving forward, I guess you could say. So with choosing Marfa, you know, I did a little bit of research and with the stories that we decided to do, which was uh, Paisano Hotel, uh, Marfa Garza, and then also Marfa Spirits Company. And so I feel touching on those, touching on those places was pretty neat because, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, why people go there. You know, the whole idea is doing Uniquely West Texas, it's kind of like a tourist attraction. You know, we're trying to show our audience like, hey, you know, this is what makes like the city so unique. And so with choosing, you know, a form of art, you know, and also like a beverage grub sort of place, and then also, you know, somewhere to stay, you know? So I felt like just kind of touching on like different things of the city um, really helped me build the show. And I think 
you know, doing those three spots, you know, I think it was just pretty, I guess you could say spot on, you know, and I feel that it really encompassed Marfa um, as a whole, you know. So this had to be really hard because we know when you visit Marfa, there are so many attractions there. Yeah. How were you able to narrow it down and tell us a little bit about your thinking on each of the stories that you picked? Yeah. So with the first story that we did, I believe that was with uh, Hotel Paisano. I know Jolina Ogazaki, our reporter and anchor, she covered it. And it was so amazing to be able to go to this spot because I had done my research, like I said, you know, beforehand. And I what really caught on to it was Hotel Paisano. You know, what's so unique about it is there's history behind it. And the movie Giant was filmed in Marfa. And sure enough, you know, the actors, James Dean, Elizabeth Taylor, you know, they needed somewhere to stay. So Hotel Paisano was the spot. And, you know, when visiting Hotel Paisano, it really, like, the history is all there. You know, kind of like the, um, the guy said, Joe Duncan, the owner, you know, he said that he tried to preserve everything that was, you know, in the 1930s, you know, that time frame. You know, he tried to preserve that history and keep the hotel the way it is today. So you know, that really stood out to me. You know, I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to put this in the show, you know, because it's going to attract so many people, especially like big movie stars were there, you know, and you get to even stay in the same room that the movie star stayed in. And then going on to uh, the Marfa Spirits Company, you know, I had, uh, was looking up, you know, places to eat there, you know, what really stood out. And with Marfa Spirits Company, so they're so tall out oh, liquor, they're so tall liquor, it actually is made in Mexico and they bring it over to Marfa to get distilled and they sell it everywhere. And, you know, I had seen it all over social media and it's just such a popular liquor that so many people talk about and, you know, being able to meet the owner and just see the dynamic of the whole bar in itself and the distillery too. Like I can see why so many people are attracted to it. And okay. then, well, inquiring oh. minds want to know, yeah. did you taste it? What is it oh. like? <laughs> Unfortunately, well, okay, I got a little bit of a sip of it, but it was very ground to earth, dirt flavor. But then again, I don't, I don't drink much <laughs> myself. I was, good. <laughs> I was on the job. So, you know, I only could taste so much of it, but no. Earthy. It, just, it, it was, was earthy. Er yeah, earthy. It was earthy. And then, um, <laughs> Going on to also, you know, with Marfa Garza, so I'm thinking, you know, for me, I'm a shopper. I love to look at art pieces, and with Marfa, you know, there's so many art museums there and so many different, like, places to shop at, and so Marfa Garza came up. And with that one, it was so unique be being able to meet the person behind the artwork, Roberto Dobson, and hear his story, um, which Jason Freund had covered, just being able to hear his story and how he came from a big city to such a small town and his work flourished. You know, I know that Dobson mentioned that he went to Japan and I was like, oh my goodness, like that is so awesome to be able to study what you're passionate about and then have it flourish, you know, here in West Texas, you know, out of all the places that he could have gone to that are so art commercial or big yes, or, commercial yeah. or big, you know, he chose Marfa. And so I think choosing all these three places, you know, it really, it really told the story of Marfa. And I think that's what, you know, we're trying to do. And we're also, you know, trying to tell the audience, you know, like, hey, like, you may pass through Marfa, but these are some places that you really got to check out, you know, because sometimes I'll be on a road trip and I pass through little small towns and I don't even stop to think, you know, what does this city have to offer? And so I think, you know, covering Hotel Paisano, Marfa Spirits Company and Marfa Garza, you know, that just really... And they're stood. kind of off the beaten path because, you know, you can always see Marfa Prada, the art installations, mm -hmm. things of that nature, but she really wanted to kind of delve into what else it has to offer. Of course, you know, I wanted to dive into not only the companies or, you know, the businesses, but, you know, just to tell people's stories, you know. And I know that we were only able to cover, you know, so much in such a short amount of time, you know, with one show. But I feel like it's kind of like we're teasing it, you know, and I think, you know, we didn't 
when doing the show, you know, we didn't want to do too much information to give away the magic of it. You know, we wanted to just sprinkle a little a bit, a little bit of a taste, sprinkle of it. a little bit of taste of it, and then viewers can go like see it on their own. You know. Well, let's talk about our another stop that we had on our uniquely West Texas series. That's Fort Stockton. Obviously, it is rich in history. Was that one of the big draws for you to to want to do that? city yeah so with fort stockton you know when i went out there we were trying to figure out a place to you know set up shop for you and alex and for everybody in production and one place that really stood out was zero stone park and what was so unique about zero stone park is the surrounding uh buildings around uh, the surrounding of it because you know zero stone park it's a landmark and, you know, right across from Zero Stone Park, we had the old jail cell. And then we had the Annie Riggs Museum. And there was, and we also had, there was just so many landmarks that were around it. So I think it's kind of like you, we were in the center of history, I guess you could say. So I think that's what really drew me to it is this park, you know, setting up shop there. And it's like everywhere you look, you know, all the buildings, you know, there's a story behind it. And it's interesting, if you ask people around town, um, all that history is still around today. You can actually ask people on the street and they can tell you, is that part of the appeal too, that almost everyone can tell you the story? Yeah, so with, you know, going into the stories that we did, you know, the old jail cell, Annie Riggs Museum, and also the historic fort itself, you know, these are museums that live on today, you know, and it was so exciting to be able to visit each one of them and just see like the history that they preserve you know and it's so crazy because they they still attract so many people and i know it must take a lot of work you know to preserve the old jail cell you know because that in itself it's it's so unique i mean it it, it seems like there's a lot of pride they keep those museums in tip-top shape there's a lot of pride there mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure and especially meeting the people that keep it the way that it is, you know, we have Ross Hopper, Ross, sorry, Ross Harper, who not only uh, maintains the historic fort, but also the Annie Riggs Hotel. So I think it's unique that people that are so familiar with the town, you know, like they know how important it is to keep the museums the way that they are for the whole city, and to be able to do, to be able to do different events there as well, you know, and. I believe that also in Fort Stockton, you know, they have the water carnival too, you know? So with just these different events that they do, you know, these museums, you know, that that's how they flourish, you know, with all the different events that they have going on. Well, one of the cool things, Alex and I had a chance to meet a descendant of Andy Riggs. Oh, so yeah. there's living history <laughs> there too. So it's really like taking a page out of the history books. And, yeah. and so that was really the reason that, that got you to Fort Stockton. Yeah, you know, especially with doing Fort Stockton and with Marfa, just really both of those cities and the places that we touched on, you know, I think, I mean, we couldn't have done it any better. I, I couldn't have done it any better choosing all those places. And, you know, hopefully with the viewers that do watch the show, I hope that, you know, they're able to go and experience it themselves just like we did. Oh, so do we, because we had such a great time. We also visited two other unique Texas towns, Big Spring and Fort Davis. For more on that, Let's go over to Alex. Crystal, thanks for that. Now I've got another one of our producers here, another mastermind. This is Gary Cortez. He's our producer of the six o'clock show. He was also the man behind some of our uniquely West Texas places that we've showed you. We started off in Big Spring, Gary. Obviously a lot of history there, big city. Tell me how you settled on Big Spring. How did that get into the mix of uniquely West Texas here? Well, Big Spring is really important to the entirety of West Texas because for a lot of what we consider to be West Texas, you know, Midland, Odessa, and all the surrounding communities really started with the springs in Big Spring. Uh, it helped the Comanche tribes back in the day, and the earliest settlers there were the ones who found those springs and were able to flourish. And, you know, with a source of water in the desert, you need an oasis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what you got. So you, you actually went to the Comanche Trail Park uh, that celebrates that history, mm -hmm. and you uh, gave us an amazing uh, story 
Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, there was so much in the park. You know, you don't always think about a park just having a golf course, right? It has a playground. It's got a, an aquatic center. It had so much to offer, and that was one of the places where I went there, and I didn't really know how much was in that park until you're there. But that in itself, I think, you mentioned the history about the Comanche tribe. Right there in that park, that's basically how Big Spring started. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, we spoke with uh, Tammy Schressengast. Mm -hmm. She told mm -hmm. us, you know, that area is really important to everything in West Texas, it just you know, ecosystem as well, very important. And she mentioned that it was one of the best places, not only just for water, mm -hmm. but also for sight lines. You know, if you, if you go up on, on just the right bluffs and just the right areas, you could see for miles on a good day, which helps, you know, in, in defending a frontier area and also in just surviving in a in a desert environment. Yeah, and it was truly amazing. On a clear day, you could see for about 15 to 20 miles, even beyond that, she told me. So obviously a great place to stop in Big Spring. We also had the opportunity, Hunter Alcocer stopped at the Hangar 25 uh, Museum. I mean, you talk about history in one place, about aviation and so much with wartime and things like that. How did that come up for you to say, hey, this is a good place where we should go to for Uniquely West Texas? Well, it was part of also just telling the story of in order. You know, we have the founding of Big Spring with the Big Springs with the Comanche tribes and the frontiersmen. And then you had a little further on the line, you have uh, World War II, you know, and how pretty much the entire nation had to come together for this one singular moment that really defines everything else. And the fact that a part of West Texas is such an integral part, you know, we had the, the uh, Webb Air Force Base out there. And while it is closed down now, Hangar 25 Museum tells their story in such a unique way. It tells the story of, you know, how the Northern bomb site and how innovations in technology were tested out here in West Texas that helped us uh, not only fight the war, but win it mm -hmm. in a very decisive manner. Yeah, and there were some planes in there that were, you know, uh, 80, 90 years old that were built and then restored in there for museum purposes. But I mean, clearly, uh, Big Spring and the aviation, uh, they kind of go together. And that was a huge, huge moment for us to get that all captured and tell the story. And I'm sure, you know, all the maritime people can really appreciate that. Of course, of course. Uh, in fact, we spoke with the administrator there, Amber Stokes. She was mm. a really wonderful resource. Very nice lady, by the way. Hunter Alcacer uh, spoke praises of her. She uh, explained to us how it's one of just the finest places in West Texas to get history. Mm -hmm. And the community out there, she spoke glowing of the community, how they appreciate the support they get as, as, a, as a museum, you know, through donations, through events, and all that kind of stuff. And it's very, it's, it's heartening to know that uh, out here, history is so important to people that they're willing to set, set aside a lot just to remember who came before. Certainly, it's amazing what you can find when you start peeling back the layers, especially in Big Spring. Now, a city that big, that's how we started it. We kind of wrapped things up in Fort Davis, a much smaller community, but did not lack any history. Fort Davis, in fact, had more there to do, I think, than people realize. It's quite a bit away from Midland, Odessa, but how did you decide, hey, Fort Davis, that's a great place to end this thing? Well, it's kind of interesting because Big Spring, for a lot of us who live in the Midland Odessa area, is pretty close. It's not that far away, but it is also, you know, some, something we all know. And it's a good place to start because it is the start of West Texas' story in a lot of ways. And Fort Davis, I, I consider kind of as an ending, a good place to end, because not only is it, you know, so high up in the mountains where it's this beautiful um, skyline where you can see everything, you can reach the summit from there, you also have the future. A lot of um, scientific endeavors happen out there at the McDonald Observatory. We got to explore the Hobby Everly Telescope, one of the biggest optical telescopes in the world, right here in West Texas, where they discover all kinds of things from galaxies far flung al along the way to even the, d the mysteries of dark matter. Uh, something that we have not unraveled for years and something that we might soon discover the mysteries of right here in West Texas. I mean, it was incredible. We talked, we talked to Steve Janowicki, he's an astronomer down there. He told us, I mean, all the schools that are involved at the McDonald Observatory from across the state, you're talking about A&M, UT, I mean, the list goes on and on. I think the whole part of that story of you telling it was really just trying to make people aware of what's right here in their backyard. It might be two and a half hours away, but you're talking about a historic telescope here. Of course, and it's something that is super important to understand about West Texas is we're not just uh, farming, we're not mm -hmm. just oil and gas. We are truly a unique, diverse location. And there's so much to learn about it if you just go outside your door. And I hoped 
that through uh, telling the story of you know Big Spring and Fort Davis, that people got a little bit of that travel bug as well. Got uh, you know the feeling that hey, maybe I should go out and explore this area that's in many ways just our backyard. Yeah, I mean, we're going to space. I mean, it's it's incredible. Like you said oil and gas all the way up to the stars. So clearly West Texas has a lot. And just to wrap things up in Fort Davis, that wasn't the only place we stopped. We actually got to learn a lot about how Fort Davis came to be called Fort Davis and what the city meant for settlers passing through to El Paso. Talk a little bit more about that. Right, so we sent out Tyler Dupnik to, to learn more about that area and how the fort of Fort Davis that it is named after really came to be as part of a bigger project of frontier settlement across from San Antonio to El Paso, that San Antonio El Paso Road. It was one of the main stops for tra travelers uh, going along that road, hit, getting to Oregon and the rest of the West Coast. And it was so important to the area that, you know, you had a garrison there of soldiers, obviously, mm -hmm. you had uh, hospitals, you had civilian workers, and over time that community began to build around it because it was so important. Uh, it, it, in a lot of ways, it was kind of the midland of, big, of the Big Bend area because it was, a, it was a good place to stop, good place to rest, and it was also a good place to, well, we found out, raise a family. <laughs> exactly. It is a beautiful place as well. We also learned a lot about the natural beauty of Fort Davis and just how amazing the Chihuahuan Desert region is in general. Because West Texas is not just the Permian Basin. Right. We're, uh, it's one section of it. But you also have the Davis Mountains, the Guadalupe Mountains, and of course, the Big Bend region and Chihuahuan Desert. Yeah, really is north, south, east, west. Anywhere you can really look is essentially West Texas, it seems. But before we go, what was your favorite part about this? This is your first time producing Uniquely West Texas. We had a lot of good memories on the road. What was one that stuck out to you? So this had to be probably one of my first live shows of all time, ever uh, producing uh, from scratch and building out just everything I wanted from Big Spring to Fort Davis. Uh, everything that you guys saw on, uh, on screen had something to do with me at one point or another. <laughs> uh, a lot of the words that came out of your mouth, I wrote. <laughs> exactly. Um, hopefully they were all good. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite part really had to be a lot of the uh, early scouting we did. Like before we actually went out to film our live shows before we went out to speak with a lot of these people, we had to, of course, scout the area, learn about, you know, what are the stories that we can tell there? How can we reach people and what will be interesting to our audiences? And one of those trips included myself and a few of our other uh, people. Uh, we went out to Fort Davis by ourselves to go uh, see the McDonald Observatory and we got to watch uh, them actually rotate mm -hmm. the uh, Hobby Everly telescope and it was it's loud. <laughs> it is very loud when you hear all these hydraulics yes. going off, but you can see as it spins, there's this wonderful optical illusion as light is refracting off the mirrors in there. And it was one of those sites that it's going to stick with me for a really long time because it was just so beautiful and it really settled in my mind that I think I love West Texas. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've lived here most of say, my you're, life. You're from San Angelo. Yes, so just, I've just lived here my whole really life. Now. And I've always loved West Texas, but that was the moment when I'm like, you know what? I really love it. Yeah. I really love and it. And hey, uniquely West Texas, the word unique, it's so true. I mean, it adds up to all these different places and towns that we've gone to. Garrick, it was so much fun. We thank you for all the hard work that you and Clarissa did. One half of the mastermind here between what you saw on TV. We had so much fun, Crystal and I, going all across West Texas and hey, this is a tease for next year. We don't know where we're going yet, but I'm Not sure yet. wherever it is, if Garrick and Cl uh, Clarissa are involved, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to see so much about West Texas that you don't even know about. Well, we had fun. Thank you so much, sir. We want to give a huge shout out to all of the organizations, businesses, and most importantly, the people who helped us make Uniquely West Texas truly amazing this year, Crystal. Well, we'd like to thank the communities of Big Spring, Fort Stockton, Marfa, and Fort Davis for hosting us. And a really big shout out to everyone at home who watched our journey every Friday. Yeah, and if it wasn't for these two, it would not be done. So thank you so much.